come to praise him, come to give him glory and honor. So we've got to begin.
can celebrate this morning. Thank you, Jesus, that, Lord, you died on the cross, Lord, you were put in the tomb, but you're no longer there. Thank you, Lord, that you are alive and alive forevermore. And because you live, we shall live also. So we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this time that we can spend in your presence. We thank you, Lord, that we can come and celebrate and be thankful for your goodness and your mercies and your enduring power that, Lord, death couldn't hold you, but you conquered death once and for all. So we thank you this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for being here with us. Thank you for your presence already in this place. Lord, we pray for a moving of your spirit. We pray that you will speak to us. We pray that you would touch our hearts. Pray that you touch our bodies if we need a touching body. And Lord, we pray that more than all, we would have known that we've met with a living God again this morning. So Lord, let's worship. We pray, we give you thanks. We honour your name, for you know there's no one other than Jesus to be honoured and glorified. Hallelujah.
on that cross of Calvary. I just give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory because no one else deserves glory. I thank you, O oh Lord, for the joy that you put in, in our hearts, the joy that you put within us, even when things aren't very good, Lord. You fill us full of your joy, full of your hope. Lord Jesus, we just praise your holy name. There is none like you, Lord Jesus, none like you. And I know I should keep my mouth shut because I'm a problem with the throat, but I just want to praise you this morning because you are worthy and there is none like you, Lord Jesus, none like you. Lord Jesus, this morning we do thank you for going to the cross and dying for us. But Lord, we thank you for the morning when the grave was empty, Lord, you were outside. And we thank you this morning, Lord, because not only are you outside the grave, but you are inside us. And because of that, we are full of joy this morning, Lord, in your risen power. Amen. Joy, joy, my heart is full of joy. Joy, joy, my heart is full of joy. singing for a few moments, that's fine. But we're going to sing, uh, Norman and I will lead you in a song while, uh, while we're taking the bread and the cup. So, this is what is written in 1 Corinthians 11. For I pass unto you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. And Lord, we do thank you. We thank you for the symbols, these emblems of the bread 
and these symbols of your blood that was shed for us, this, this cup. And Lord, we thank you that we can remember, like, like, like you've asked us to do, do this in remembrance of me. And Lord, we're remembering again the power, we're remembering again the once and for all sacrifice that you give for each one of us. So I'd like Lynn and Devante to come and as I serve them and then they're going to serve you as we worship together. Your sacrifice for us.
offer thanks, we can come and offer worship, we can come and offer praise. Thank you, Lord. And come and sing those words. Praise the name of the Lord our God. There's no one, no one that's ever been or is ever living that right now or ever will be can match up to you, can match up to what you've done, can match up to who you are. You are our saviour, our Lord, our King, our teacher, our master. Jesus. Jesus. There is no other name but the name of Jesus. Just if I come to to bring God's word, that's Think on these words that have been that have been read and been spoken. The words that have been sung. Lord, let your peace, let your presence be in this place. Isn't it good to be in the presence of God? Isn't it good to be thankful for who he is, for what he's done? To come and be with God today. Amen. I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 28. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. And this is one of the accounts of, obviously, Jesus coming back to life. This is one of the the many accounts that were written in the Bible that tell us about Jesus coming back from the dead. And this is Matthew's version. Obviously, lots of eyewitnesses, if you go through the Gospels, have slightly different, slightly a few differences here and there. But the the ultimate, the main story is the same. Jesus was dead, was put in the tomb, and then came back to life again. So that was the, the ultimate story, but this is Matthew's version, <clears throat> verse 28. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, oh, man, morning dawning, I've just realised that. <laughs> morning dawning, <coughs> Matthew was a poet. Mary, man, I didn't realise that when I was right reading it before, sorry. sorry, sorry. <laughs> Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as the snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is up here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said what happened. Come, see where his body was lying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, they would be, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go, tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, for they will see me there. Amen. Amen. It's, it's a, in one sense, it's a simple story, but in another sense, it would make a fantastic, amazing film. 
wouldn't it? And it's been made into to many, many feature films. And it's absolutely a miracle that this happened. And firstly, and simply, I want to bring the first point, that nothing can stop the power of God. Nothing can stop the power of God. Not even death itself. Nothing can stop the power of God. Jesus had been crucified. He was put in the tomb. Although, I was reading up about this, many Bible scholars even don't believe that this happened. And I'll read some of the things that these are Bible scholars, mind, don't believe that some... Well, I'm not saying... Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll read that. Some, of, some people think the resurrection story is just a story of like a symbol for... to say that God is with you and God's done something in your life. Some people said, and this is a funny one, that the disciples had hallucinations and dreams that they were mistakenly confused for Jesus coming back, back to life. So they actually, they were hallucinating and dreaming, okay? Some people say that the disciples actually stole the body from the tomb and lied about the resurrection and got all of the gospel writers and everybody to write things to say that Jesus had come back to life. That's a bit of a faff, isn't it? I think that's too much hassle. And this one's my favorite one. Some people think Jesus never really died anyway, but he lost consciousness. He regained it again after being put in the cold tomb. And this is actually called the swoon theory. The swoon, you know where people like, they say that Jesus basically fainted and then he came back, came round in the cold tomb. What utter rubbish. That's not what the Bible says. Absolutely not what the Bible says. He does say he was crucified. Even the angel said that he was. He was dead. He was. And he did die to take away our sins. And his body was placed in the tomb. But he didn't stay there. He rose again on the third day. He conquered sin and death. And he was raised to life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because nothing can stop the power of God. Nothing can stop God moving. There was an earthquake that, and I thought that's like the natural power of God. The earthquake. The angel rolled the stone away. This is a job for, I don't know how many men, because it wouldn't be like a tiny little pebble. It would be like a massive stone. And the angel, that's a supernatural power of God. The guards shook with fear. Now these would be trained Roman soldiers probably, they would be fearless, they would be trained and trained and trained, they would be maybe some of the best fighters, they could have been from any part of the Roman Empire brought to Israel on that day, they wouldn't have been from Britain because they hadn't invaded Britain then, but they would have been, could have been from any other part, and these would be the best of the best, these would be some of the best soldiers, and even then, God's power was too much for them, that they fainted that they passed out, that they were so frightened of, of what was happening that they were affected in this way. So much so that Jesus was raised back to life, that death couldn't even hold him, that death itself was not even strong enough. There's a verse in Romans 8, verse 11, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, we've just read about it there, the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives where? In us. In you. The same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. We could all do it with some, a bit of life. And I don't think it means just waking up on a morning and being a bit achy and a bit, oh and your pains are hurting. It doesn't mean that God will give you life, but he will, he's given us life eternal. He's given us life that will never end. Because while we're on the earth, that's only part of our life, while we're here, and God's with us down here by the power of his Holy Spirit, but we have an eternal hope. We have a hope that never ends. We have a hope that is eternal forever and ever and ever. As we believe in God, we know that we're accepted we're loved and we're taken and we can have that eternal home in heaven forever and ever and ever. 2 Peter 1, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need to live a godly life. 
everything we need. He's given us the power to live a godly life. We receive this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvellous glory and excellence. God's Spirit, the same Holy Spirit here is within us. It's here right now. He's come to re-energise, to rejuvenate, to reignite something. Maybe we've gone cold. Maybe you've maybe gone cold towards God. Maybe you seem a far away. God wants you to bring him back to, back to himself this morning. He wants to reignite something, excitement within you. He wants to do something in your life and in my life today. He wants to rejuvenate. He wants to empower us. He wants to give, you, give us his power, the strength to overcome. And we might think, well, I can't do that. I'm not good enough. I'm this and I'm that. And I've got lots of reasons and excuses why and why not. But it says in Romans 8, 37, no, despite all these things, overwhelm, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Nothing can stop the power of God. Nothing can stop God from moving within hearts and lives. Maybe you're, you, you're here this morning because you want something more from God. Maybe it's you want to go deeper in God. Maybe it's you want to have this reality of who God is in your life. Well, you're in the right place. Not because we're here, but because God's here. And he can speak to you, and he can move within you, and he can do something amazing in your life. And we're going to come to that in a moment, so I don't want to go into the next thing I was going to say. Because we're going to say it in a moment. But remember, first thing, number one, and leave us out as long as this, so it's fine. Nothing can stop the power of God. Nothing can stop the power of God. Number two. Don't be afraid, because God knows. Don't be afraid, because God knows. And when I wrote all this down, I thought, I actually, I thought these words, I thought, what, what, what do I mean? What am I saying? What am I thinking? Imagine the women, they're going down early. The, the Sabbath's finished, their holy day is, is over. And it finished later on the Saturday evening. I'm not getting into that now. And um, the New Testament Sabbath finished um, early, late on the Saturday. And... The Sabbath has finished, shops opened, market stalls opened, they could buy things, they could sell things, they could go about doing their business. And it was sunset that they could buy the spices, and then the Sunday morning is this story here. They bought the spices, they were going to anoint Jesus' body, and that's what they would have done. That's what the, the common practice was in the day. They were looking for Jesus' body. But God had different ideas. They were looking for something who wasn't there. They were looking in their own natural minds. They were expecting to find the body of Jesus. But he wasn't there. What did they find? They found hope. They found that Jesus wasn't there. And yes, they would be confused. Yes, they would be all over the place. But the angel brought them hope that day. God spoke into their situation, their darkness, their master had gone, their friend, their teacher, their Lord had gone. But the angel brought light. The angel brought hope. The angel changed the situation and he told them all about what had happened that day and he brought light into their dark situation. He said, he is not here, he's risen. He's risen just as he said he would. And, and I, I paraphrase what the angel might have said. Look, yeah, Jesus did die and he had to die and he, he was, he was here. But why are you looking for Jesus? And another, another version says, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. And, and you know, I, I quite like it when the, the angel, it says the angel was sat on the stone. And so to imagine him sitting, like, yeah, like, I can't wait to tell him the news. It's like... He knows what's going on. The angel sat there, sort of, <laughs> I can't wait for them coming. I know they're going to come, and I'm going to tell them some news in a minute that will change the world, will change their life forever. They, did you notice as well, they were obedient to what 
the angel said. So God knew they would be confused. God knew they would be afraid. God knew they would be unsure. And it's all right to be a bit unsure of things. It's okay because we don't understand everything. And anybody that does, please tell me what your secret is because I need to know. We don't understand all of the things that, that are going on. But we can put our trust and our hope in God. And he does know what's going on. He does understand. And as these women, uh, as the angels said to them, come and see. Come and see. He's not, not there. They obeyed. They, they might have thought, hang on, it was, it was this. Saying, well, we saw Jesus crucified. And, and, and what? But they went to see. And I, and I think as I, as I read this, I thought, God saw their hearts. God saw and looked down into their hearts. And he knew why the women had come. But he wanted a different end to the story. He knew why the women had come that day with the spices, with the, the, the things that to anoint the body. But God had other plans. This morning, as we come to him, as we come to this place, God knows your heart. God sees your heart. And he sees my heart. Just like he saw the women. Just like he, he knew why he'd come. And he wanted to bring some hope. And he wanted to bring a change into their life. And he wanted to, to tell them about what, what had happened. God knows your situation this morning. God knows. Maybe what nobody else even knows. God has you in his hands today. And in Isaiah 49 it says, and I've read this verse many times. See, I have written your name on the palm of my hands. You know, you're that special to God. We are that special to God. We're on his hands. We're on his heart. God knows you and God knows me. What nobody else knows, God knows. Those private conversations that we have at home, when we're just talking to ourselves, when we're worried, when we're concerned, when we're thinking of whatever, God knows. God sees. Just like he did with those, with those women. God knows your situation. God loves you and God cares for you. So don't be afraid. Like the angel said, every time an angel came, he said, don't be afraid. But God knows. And the final thing is, third thing, meeting Jesus changed everything. A meeting with Jesus changed everything. So the women, they come down to do what they were going to do. This angel sat on the stone twiddling his thumbs and waiting for them to come. And then he tells them the good news, he's not here, he's risen. Then they go in and see, and then he's going to start to tell the others, and then who do you see? It says here, the women ran quickly from the tomb. They were frightened, but also filled with great joy. They rushed to give the disciples the angel's message, and they had an urgency about themselves as well. Verse nine, and as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they ran to him and grasped his feet and worshipped him. An encounter with Jesus changes your life forever. Meeting Jesus makes all the difference. And it's not just a story that was written 2,000 years ago. Jesus is real. Jesus is here right now. And Jesus can meet you wherever you are and meets me wherever I am. And, he, and an encounter with Jesus will change your life forever. And it's not that, oh well, I've been saved, I've been a Christian for 50 years or 60 years or 20 years or 30. I don't need God. Oh, we do. We need him more. We need Jesus every single day. And knowing Jesus is the best thing in the world. It changes your life forever. Because we can't change ourselves, but God does. Meeting Jesus changes everything. 2 Corinthians 5. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. God wants to give us a new life, a new start, a fresh start. Our lives are different when we meet with Jesus because of his saving power, because of the resurrection power, because our lives can be transformed forever and ever. Um, Galatians 2.20 My old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I lived in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, we, we, 
People think it's just about us, and it's all about me, and it's all about what I can get, and it's all about... <coughs> but actually, it's more about God. Yeah. Putting God in the right place changes everything. Putting God in the right place, putting Jesus in your heart, asking Jesus to be part of your life. And, 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 each, and different ones of us could say what a, what a, a transform, transformation we've had knowing Jesus, knowing his saving power, his love in our lives. We couldn't earn it, but Jesus gave us hope. There's a hope that we've got that we didn't have before. There's a hope that you can't find anywhere else, even on online shops. You can't find hope. You can't find the love of God. You can't find his saving power anywhere else but by coming to God himself. Knowing that Jesus died for our sins. John 10, 10, in the message version, says this. I came so that you can have real and eternal life. More and a better life than you've ever dreamed of before. And I like that version. You can have a better life than you've ever dreamed of. Jesus can give us a better life than we can ever dream of. Because he always... He always never leaves us, never forsakes us. He always speaks into our situation and he will carry us sometimes, like I've said before. When you've got those hard times, when you're struggling, and we all go through those, God carries us through. Three things at the end, just to go to sum up. Nothing can stop the power of God. Nothing. Don't be afraid, because God knows who you are, God knows where you are, and God can be with you right now. And thirdly, meeting Jesus changes everything. This Easter, and for those who are watching at home as well, wherever it might be, in your homes, on your couch, in a chair, in the kitchen, wherever you might be, have an encounter with Jesus. Ask God to show himself to you. Say, I want to know this Jesus. This Jesus who gives life, who, this Jesus who we've been singing about and who we've been worshipping today. I want an encounter with Jesus this Easter because he will never let you down. And knowing Jesus changes your life and will change your life forever. There's nothing better, there's no one better than knowing Jesus. Amen. We are going to close, we're going to sing uh, our final song in a minute. Just, can we just pray, just for a moment? Thank you, Lord, that you are real, that you are real in this place and as we've thought about your resurrection today as we've thought about what you have done for us we've thought about your love for us we've thought about how when people met with you Lord they were changed every person who met with you was changed maybe physically but more, much better is to be changed inside, to be changed, to be saved, to know God as your Saviour, to know Jesus as Lord. Just before we sing our final song, for those who are watching online and those who are here today, if you don't know Jesus as your Saviour, if you don't know Jesus as Lord of your life, then now is the time. Today is the time. Now is the day of salvation, right this moment, to say yes to God, to say yes to Jesus. Just as those women encountered Jesus and were overjoyed, knew that he was alive, have an encounter with Jesus. Ask God to show, show you who he is, to say, yes, Lord, I, I've realised that, that I messed up. I realise that I'm a sinner. I realise... That Lord, I need you in my life. And Lord, I thank you that you died for me. I believe that you went to the cross 
so that I could have life and life more, more abundantly, life eternal. Lord, be Lord of my life. Come in and sort those messy, messy parts out, those parts that I've made a mess of. Come and be Lord of my heart, Jesus. I believe that, Lord, you died and you rose again. And I believe that you are here with me now.
and Lord, you rose again, and we thank you that we can, can praise you, and we can give you glory and give you honour. So we pray that as we go from this place, and we're with our families and our friends, we pray that you bless us. We pray that your blessing would go with us, and we would know your peace and your joy at this Easter time. In the name of Jesus, I ask it. Amen. Amen. Just before you go, as we go out, we have a little treat. I did say on Facebook, chocolate would be involved. <laughs> so, can't have Easter Sunday without chocolate. So, happy Easter. Have a great, a great time.